Hello, my name is Brandon Falk, and I'm here to demo GAM Linux, the Linux distribution that I've been working on over about the past week, and it's finally time to put it on an actual CD and try it on real hardware. So, I'll be putting in the description below a link to the website where I'm hosting it, and where I have documentation on it, as well as where I have documentation for Fastinit, which is my init ramifest that I use to boot into bash. So I'm going to put it in my CD drive right now and we're gonna give it a go. Now I just gotta wait for that to uh, turn off my lights here. That should give better recording. I'll take a second to focus once it does boot. Alright. Go into the boot menu here. Alright, now we're going to be booting from the CD-ROM, so here we go. As you can see, I'm using ISO Linux 4.04, which is what is used to boot the kernel. So, it's pretty simple, just GAM Linux installation CD, and it's got a link to the website, which you can go to, and press enter the boot. Right now I have no other options. So we're gonna give it a go. So, one of my incentives to making this operating system is because before I used to use FreeBSD, and for the past three, four years I have been using FreeBSD, and I finally decided that I wanted to check out what Linux was all about, as so many people have been using it, and all of the supercomputing industries use it as well, so I thought it would be what I'd want to go with. So I switched from FreeBSD to Linux, but I wanted the port style package management system. So Gentoo has a similar, you know, ports-like system, but I wasn't too happy when I tried it out because the uh, portage was segfaulting on me. So I'm going to be writing a new package management system that will be similar to ports, and it will be running uh, in C. So it should work just fine. Well, as you can see, I've already talked over the boot time. Uh, it says it booted in 2.38 seconds which isn't entirely true because it still had to load stuff from the CD-ROM but otherwise if it were loading from RAM or a hard drive it would probably be about that 2.38 seconds depending on what all you configure as you can see I have a PCI error and a DRMI915 error the PCI error is due to my motherboard kind of failing on me and DRMI915 is for graphics card which I'm not using right now uh, I'm using the actual PCIe one. As you can see Fastenet here is really lightweight it's written all in assembly and essentially it creates some temporary file systems mounts the CD, mounts the gamma-linux.sfs which is squashfs which is what contains basically all the files, libraries, binaries, configuration, whatnot and that's mounted, and then tempfs, proc, sysfs, and another tempfs are mounted, and finally it ch roots into where the squashfs system is mounted, and then it starts bash. So, uh, one of the new features I just added is now it forks off from the init process before it, it used init as bash and as you can see init is running at the top there and at the bottom you have bash which is booted uh, as you can see it's just a pretty simple hierarchy you've got libs, lib64 I do have the Linux kernel source on here the latest tarball 2.6.39.1 which I will be compiling later on in this video but as you can see, it's a pretty usable system. I could go into root. Root is a temporary file system, and I can just do vimtest.c, and we can do a simple hello world application here to show exactly what I have included. All right. Uh, as you can see, Vim is installed. Vim happens to be my favorite edi editor, 
So I'm sorry for people who like Nano or whatnot. So now I can just do GCC. It has to load GCC from the CD-ROM, and then it will compile. It doesn't actually take this long if you have it on a proper hard drive. As you can see, now I have A.out. .out. I can run that, and it says, hello from Gamlinux. So as you can see, it's a very, very simple system set up here. But it's got a lot of the features. As you can see, libc, it's got, you know, proc and whatnot. So I could do cat proc CPU info and prints off all the CPU info. So, other things I can say is that my goal is to make this as lightweight as possible, as you may have noticed. And I'm also trying to have it based towards modern systems, like AMD64 systems. So that way, it will it'll basically take advantage of all the new uh, operations that the new systems can do. I mean, as you can see here from CPU info, I have loads of different flags on my CPU, and lots of times on systems the kernels are very generic and they don't have all these and they try and support old systems which I'll try to do in the future but not right now but st stuff like all these instruction sets that have been recently added I feel really should be focused on and that way we can take advantage of the new modern technology we have today so I'm gonna go back into root here and I'm gonna remove the two files I made now I'll go back to the home directory. As you can see, it's a very simple setup. For the PS1, I just have a hash symbol for root, and it's red. I thought red was kind of nice for root because it's kind of like, you know, be aware you're running as root. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to copy the Linux uh, tarball into root, which is a temporary file system, as I mentioned before. That way we can compile the kernel all in memory because everything else is read-only right now. I will be working on a copy on write solution, but that won't be out for a little bit now. Uh, this is taking a little bit of time. Obviously, it just has to pull it from the CD into RAM, so we're kind of bottlenecking on the CD drive right here. All right, it's all copied. Now we can go into root. There you can see it's there. And now you can do an extract on the Linux kernel. This will also take a little bit of time. Keep in mind everything will take a little bit more time as it has to load from the CD and not everything is on a hard drive. I can't quite stress that enough. So now everything is all extracted, so I can remove the tarball to save a little bit of space on RAM. Now you can see the into Linux, and as you can see, here's the latest Linux 2.6.39.1 source. So we're just going to do a make menu config, and now we are configuring it. And to save time in this video, I'm just going to simply exit and use all the defaults. As you can see, it's a 64-bit system, as that's all we support right now. So I'm just going to do a time and a make and 24 jobs, and we will give this a go. So right now, I'm looking for basically a user base who finds interest in this modern computing, lightweight, very performance-based computing environments. And if there's anyone interested in porting what I've made over to maybe a 32-bit system, which I might do myself, or maybe a different type of CPU that's not even Intel or AMD. So I'm probably going to work on that 32-bit version. If someone wants to put it on a different system like ARM, they you know, have all the source, but you'd have to know how to write for ARM in assembly because init is written in assembly. Later down the road, init will run a actual C program to do more of the difficult init, but the assembly version is doing the very, very low level initialization of the system. Do, 
This may be slightly boring, but I feel it's a good stress test to show the system working and show how many features I have that come with on the CD. So, there we go. Kernel's all compiled, took 1 minute 29 seconds, user time of 14 minutes 34 seconds, and now we can go into Arch x86 boot bz image. Uh, no, oops, that's not a directory. But as you can see, we have all of the files here, and we have compiled the kernel. So now you could use one of the tools. Um, I have CF disk, but right now none of the disk drives are set up in dev, so it really doesn't do anything yet. But in the future, it will be pretty easy to use the standard utilities to partition your hard drive and start installing there. So if you want, you could compile kernels and all what you want in RAM and then put those directly onto your hard drive. That way you don't ever have to have some pre-compiled binaries on your system. As people aren't into binaries, some people are. That's however you want to operate. So I feel this is a pretty good demo of what all game Linux does and you can look in the description below for the Fastnet and Game Linux websites and you can feel free to contact me or comment below and basically tell me what you think or any suggestions or maybe you want to be part of the team so currently it's just me working on this and it'll probably stay that way for a little bit of time until it's stabilized but soon I'll need probably a little bit of help as I aim to have more of a and curses based install so you will be able to set up your networking, set up daemons, set up you know partitions and copy over a system all from a handy little end curses install configuration. Of course there will always be an option of doing a command line installation so if you just want to go to the link below you can see what exactly is installed and you'll be able to hopefully try it out soon once I get this uploaded. So I'm always looking for mirrors if you're willing to mirror this. Right now it's about 350 meg. I did strip it down the other day and I stripped it to like 100 meg by getting rid of debug symbols. But sadly that screwed up the install so I'm gonna have to be a little bit more careful on what I do there and hopefully I'll be able to get it down to 100 meg or 150 meg. So that's that's all. So, there will be more and more videos coming soon, some that will be aimed towards installation, some that will be aimed towards, you know, high level development or whatnot. I'm just going to be doing a lot based on Linux and a lot based on Gam Linux. So, if you find interest in this, always come to the channel and I'm sure in two days I'll have another video up and I'm hoping that people will take interest in this project. So, I can't think of anything more to say right now, so I will make any more videos when I have more information to say. Thank you for watching.